What's good? It's your boy Zar, All Rights Reserve. I know I'm coming to you with an early morning joint, but I really didn't know if I was going to do this story. But having put the pieces together, I was going to put it this way. So everybody's talking about Rico Reckless and what's going on with him and the MC Tuck 100 and how he basically had a, a weapon pointed at him because he allegedly dissed a gang or something this guy was affiliated to. Uh, that makes a lot of sense being the situation and how it looks. But there's a few things in this case that need to be understood. Uh, one of the main ones is that this situation itself should be seen as in part retaliation for the few videos he has made in Chicago. Uh, you got to understand that this took place in Atlanta. So when stuff like this happens in Atlanta, it, it's it's not cut and dry. It's not it's not like he went somewhere where he had power. Uh, wherever this young guy was, Tuck 100, that's where the power for him was. So Rico Reckless, as we know, is from Chicago. He's a Chirac resident. This means a lot because that's his home turf. So there was a certain way he took to operating there. And what he was referencing was the disses he was giving Chicago residents. It wasn't at guys where he was. But that doesn't mean where he was didn't have connections in Atlanta. So it seemed like this guy was addressing him for taking a shot at his enemies back home. When this type of stuff happens, it's hard to, let's say, prove something. It's hard to to make some type of stance because you're in a different city. You got to move how everybody else moves or by their code, especially if you're with the shits like he is in Chicago. Um, he was on the phone. Now, what was crazy to me is he took a picture with him and he was on the phone. Did they see him on Instagram live with these guys? And then a call was made to Tuck because um, we seen Rico Reckless on the phone talking to someone. That was kind of crazy to me. You know what I mean? And the it, it, it was, in my opinion, what I think happened was um, Tuck was on live with him and then he got contacted by uh, other relative gang members that may have been from back home from Rico Reckless, we don't know. It may even have been uh, from another area. Like, yo, did you see what he was doing? And you said, you know, you rock with him. You'll do different things for him. You have his back. He seen it, and then Tuck probably felt clowned because he took a live Instagram with this guy who was dissing the overall unit he stood for it's not that he was in the same team as anybody else but he dissed the unit he stood for and he got contacted to act a certain way now in this next part i don't know if rico reckless is he if is he seems to be showing intelligence too he was either not really on the phone with some people that he knew or really on the phone or he got the heads up that hey you know what i mean they're contacting the people you were hanging out with because he, he said he was lacking. And, but you could tell Rico felt the pressure of a, of a pending incident being of how he approached the car and he had the phone up and was ready to show him. Then he had the person speed off. I don't know what's going to be coming to because, excuse me, it's early in the morning or not, but because. I don't know what's going to become of it because, as we know, I, it looked like Rico went back to that area. I don't know why he went back. I don't know whether he linked up with other people. Of course, he wouldn't show him on camera and stuff, but I don't know whether he linked up with other people. But I don't know. Is this a new drama started? Is this something else we're going to see in the media come back up? Because no way that was in Chicago knowing the things Rico Reckless says, who he's with, how he moves. I don't think he would have moved like that to allow that to happen to him because he knows how Chicago is. But he was in Atlanta, so, you know, he was kind of hanging out with people. And if you listen to what he said, he said he took some pictures with fans. He stood up. So he didn't see these guys as he didn't. He probably didn't know what they were. And he probably didn't see what they were because they probably didn't scream it out. But uh, 
outsider affiliations were made clear once they made the they got their phone call and at the same time Rico probably got a phone call like hey uh these guys represent this gang like you, you like in in the middle of that that's when they came out and said something if you watch the video very carefully, it's not normal that you'd sit around somewhere that you feel unwanted. Like, so if he felt like he wasn't supposed to be there, he, he wouldn't have been sitting there. He would have took off, but he was comfortable. He just left out the store taking the picture. So he thought everything was good. But in the middle of that, they were probably like, yo, you need to get out of there. You, you, know, you know that movie, Get Out. I presume he got a call. They were like, get out, get out. And then when she turned there, the guy was there like, hey, um, you see how you kind of say, were you dissing? You know what I mean? So it, it, I think we caught an unfortunate event in the middle of it occurring. And when we look at this, it really shows us the culture on which a lot of violence occurs between black on black crime. Uh, it could be for something they stand for. It could be over uh money of course over anything so that's what i'm saying these are the factors that maybe need to be brought because ultimately we're all on the same mission if that guy got arrested tuck and rico got arrested there would be no difference there they wouldn't say okay you're with this gang so you know you get this sentence and you're with this gang you both will get the same sentence. You both will get seen and treated the same. You both will probably get abused the same. Okay. That's the that's my thing. That's why this stuff going on, it needs to chill out because you you both will get treated the same. So who would be the gang really winning? The police, right? So what's your lifestyles allegedly? It's a lose lose. There's no win win here. That's what I'm saying. That's what my opinion on you guys is. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're both in two different gangs, how relevant is that to you getting money together or coming up? That That's what the focus should be. It should be about coming up. It should never be about who's with what gang, who said what, who did what. This is what's holding us back. It's not pop. It's not. It is policies and procedures to some extent. But before we even get to the policies and procedures holding us back, we can never address it because of personal beefs that these guys are taking out on each other. You know, people are like, oh, these guys are goofies. They're this, they're that. It's deeper than that. It's something they grown up in to learn to stand for. It's all how they learned and were taught. And how they choose to act, of course. But a choice is as simple as, man, I'm putting a, I'm putting this on today. Or let me let me change that. Or let me get this. It, it's a simple choice. So when they choose this lifestyle to live it daily, they just need to see a wider perspective. And that's what I'm saying. You need to think about the effect you have on the environment around you. Not only the environment around you affecting you, you could either choose to go with the flow or choose to change. And when I say to change, you change things around you, you change how you react, you change overall the steps you take to accomplish the goals you want to see. There's many ways to make it to the goals you guys want to see in life. And if it's all about money, I really don't know what to say because money itself is paper good credit is all the money you need and that's just a simple mentality like when people inherit that mentality everything begins to make sense when you have good credit your money's endless so everybody's out here like let's get this money let's get this money real quick because i want to have a solution to my videos and i don't want to just be putting things out there uh, just to say to try and make people feel better when it comes to money and good credit, if you get those credit, I don't know 
where it's coming from. When you get those credit cards in the mail, let me do something real quick. One of the main parts of what you want to do when you get those credit cards in the mail, you want to keep them. And if they say 0% APR, that's what you want to know. You know what I mean? That's what you want to keep. Uh, that's what's most important. The 0% APR sets the tone. Um, it's, it's something that you want to hold close because that's going to allow you to do what you need to do. Hold on, let me take care of this. I don't know what's going on, but all rights reserved.